we want to find the mass of Sagittarius A. And we'll look at uh, a star known as SO2 or S2. We'll look at its orbital period to uh, the orbital period of that star to get the mass of Sagittarius A. So what does this all mean? Here, here's a sketch of our Milky Way. And in the center of our Milky Way is a supermassive black hole. That supermassive black hole is known as Sagittarius A. And out towards one of the arms of the Milky Way is where the Earth is located. And the distance from the Earth to Sagittarius A is about uh, 26,000 light years. So we're going to take a close look at this area. Here's Sagittarius A, the supermassive black hole. The abbreviation for it is SGR A star. And here we're showing not an exact orbit, but we're just sketching in the orbit of a star known as SO2. And another name for that star is just S2. So that star is orbiting Sagittarius A. And the period is 15.6 years. Uh, I'm indicating here there's another star. That one's not shown. That actually has a shorter period. But we're going to concentrate on SO2. Uh, and I, I just want to go over a couple terms down here. You know that when the Earth is close to the sun, we call that perihelion. When the Earth is far from the Sun, we call that aphelion. When a star is close to another star, or when a star is close to a black hole, we talk about the closest point of approach being periastron, and the furthest point of approach is ap apastron. And there's another name to periapsis and apoapsis, and they refer to a center of mass. But because the supermassive black hole is so large, the center of mass of this system is in the center of Sagittarius A. So we'll use these terms describing the closest point of star SO2 to the black hole, and this term to describe the most distant point. Now let's take a closer look at this region here. So here, here it is again, Sagittarius A star with SO2 in orbit around it. And now I'm calling out those distances that we just talked about. The closest one, periastron, this distance. And the more distant point is apastron from here to here. And the ellipse major axis, the elliptical orbit that S O2 is in. Here's the major axis from one end to the other. And what we're going to need is the semi-major axis. And the semi-major axis we denote by A. And it's equal to these two distances divided by 2. This point here. That's the semi-major axis. Semi-major axis. We're going to need an equation relating the period to the semi-major axis. And instead of deriving it, I'm going to state it down here. The period is equal to 2 pi semi-major axis to the 3 halves power and the square root of g times the sum of the two masses. Uh, instead of deriving that here, if you're interested in a derivation, you can go to this website. There's a section called Favorite Physics Problems. And there's a subject listed there, full from orbit. And if you look at that text, you'll find the derivation for this expression, which we need. So if we come over here now, here's that same expression. By the way, you can see this is Kepler's law. Um, the period squared is proportional to the radius vector cubed. And the proportionality constant are these terms. So here's that expression again, written out specifically for the two masses, Sagittarius A star, the supermassive black hole, 
and the star that's orbiting it, S02. Now, since the mass of Sagittarius A is so much larger, we can ignore the mass of SO2. So we'll, we'll write the period being equal to this expression. So the only difference is the mass for SO2 is not included here. So if we look at what the actual semi-major axis is, the closest point of approach of SO2 to the black hole is 120 astronomical units. At the far point, it's 1,800 astronomical units away. So the semi-major axis is the sum of those two numbers divided by two. That's what we had up here. And the period is 15.6 years, and we're just converting that to seconds here. And the gravitational constant is this value. So if we take these numbers and substitute them in here, uh, without this factor here, we find that the mass of Sagittarius A is this number here. And if you like to see the mass in terms of sun, suns, the mass of the sun is roughly 2 times 10 to the 30th kilograms. So the mass of Sagittarius A is roughly 4 million suns. And so based on the period of 15.6 years, based on the orbit size that can be seen from the Earth uh, through very sophisticated telescopes that use adaptive opti optics to correct for atmospheric problems. These are the numbers for the closest point and, and the far point. So with those numbers, we come up with an estimate for the mass of Sagittarius A, the supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way, roughly 4 million suns.